Okay, we back in Brooklyn. We have more stories on the way coming from out here. This is more of a compilation of events that took place. Sad thing, it was young people involved, either victims or perps. A young man named Mario grew up in the Bushwick houses. He was said to be smart, funny and outgoing. He was on the junior high school chess team and played chess regularly at the Bushwick Highland Community Center. By the time he transitioned to high school, the streets would take a hold of him. Mario would become affiliated with the Young Stackers crew, a gang from the Bushwick houses. During this time, Young Stackers were in a beef with a crew from the Tompkins houses, the Stack Money Goons, SMG. If you know about the Tompkins houses, they have historically feuded with the Marcy houses crew, known as the Twan Gang at the time, and also feuded with the Roosevelt houses crew. Around this time, Mario had already been slipping, racking up absences from school, then getting arrested, causing him to miss more days. One account was that he was arrested for gun possession, another was that he was in a fight. On July 6, 2013, at approximately 6.30 pm, there was a basketball tournament going on in Marcy. Mario and a number of other young stackers were in attendance. A member of Stack Money Goons walked by and realized that one of the young stackers that was in Marcy that day had previously pulled a gun on him. He then called his brother, Brandon, also known as Man Man, for backup. After an argument ensued between his brother and the young stackers, Brandon pulled his gun from his waistband and fired approximately nine shots. Mario Lopez was shot approximately eight times and pronounced dead later that evening. Three others were injured. A 13-year-old shot in the neck with a bullet exiting his nose was left with permanent partial paralysis of his face. A second 13-year-old was shot in the knee, and a 15-year-old was grazed on the hip and suffered minor injuries. But according to people that knew Mario, he had been previously targeted, including an attempted stabbing. It was said that he was shot at before as well. Mario was 18 at the time of his death. In March of 2015, Brandon was sentenced to 47 years in prison. By 2016, another shooting would take place. This time, by a member of the Young Stackers. In July of 2016, a 16-year-old victim was standing with friends outside on Avenue X at Brown Street when Joseph, 21 at the time, approached on a bicycle and pulled out a 40 caliber firearm from his waistband. He then chased the victim into the street and fired multiple times, according to investigators. The victim was hit once in his left leg and once in his right buttock. He was treated and released at Lutheran Medical Center. Joseph, a member of the Young Stackers Street Gang, was apprehended a month later. He was released on $25,000 bail following his August arrest. But then, in March 2017, a Brooklyn judge revoked Ackwood's bail because of red flags raised by a Facebook post. Joseph allegedly posted two rad emojis posted to the page of a potential witness. He would be sentenced to 10 years in prison and 5 years as post-release supervision, following his guilty plea to second-degree attempted murder. In July 2018, another person was killed as a result of gang violence. Detectives had linked back-to-back -back Brooklyn shootings that left a 15-year-old boy dead and two others wounded, and cops had busted the alleged gunman in the teen's murder. Sources said both shootings near the Bushwick houses were sparked by an ongoing fight between the street crews, the Young Stackers and the Marcy Gangsters. The teenage victims in each shooting were somehow connected to the Young Stackers. The bloodshed began about 1 p.m. when a 16-year-old was shot in the torso on Flushing Avenue near Humboldt Street. Witnesses said that two teens chased him down at Flushing Avenue before taking a shot at him. They were laughing, so I thought they were playing said a witness who saw the shooting unfold. Then they let one shot go. It was one shot, but he kept running into the projects. We didn't know he was hit at first because he just kept going. Medics rushed the teen to Kings County Hospital, where he was expected to survive. About two hours later, a gunman on a bicycle fatally shot Kyan Jackson, 15, in the courtyard at the Bushwick houses. Kyan was a ninth grader at Lyons Community School. He stood over six feet tall and had basketball dreams. In addition to him getting shot, a 42-year-old homeless man also suffered a graze wound to the cheek. The gunman fled down nearby Verrett Street, turned south on White Street, and ditched the gun under a car, where police found it. Cops took one man into custody at the scene and were searching for a second, described as a black man wearing a white t-shirt and black shorts. Police identified the man as Elijah Harris, 19. He and Kyan had attended the same school. Elijah was charged with murder, assault, weapon possession and reckless endangerment. 
Sources said police used video surveillance to link Harris to Kyan's murder. He's not charged in the shooting earlier in the day. Harris said nothing as police let him out of the 90th precinct station house Wednesday night. His mother scoffed at the idea her son was in a gang. Everything is always gang related when it comes to black kids, she said. I never heard of any Marcy gangsters. They're making things up. On May 12, 2021, a shooting in Crash in Bushwick left one person dead and another wounded. It all unfolded around 11.11 p.m. that night. According to the investigation, a man approached a 2015 BMW SUV stopped at a light at the corner of Madison Street and Broadway and fired multiple shots into the vehicle. Robert Randall, 28, was fatally shot in the chest, while a second man, a 21-year-old, was critically wounded in the chest and leg. A third man in the vehicle, 22, was uninjured. According to someone who knew Randall, he was a part-time construction worker and aspiring rapper and was a cool individual. According to documents, all three men in the car were gang members with prior arrests, including pending gun possession cases where each was freed without bail. A witness said, a man walked up to the car and started shooting. The car pulled off and hit that van, one of the men jumped out of the car and rolled on the ground and ran towards the street. A car crashed into the pole. The driver jumped out and tried to run on one leg and fell down. That's when I told him get back in the car. The wrecked SUV slammed into a nearby elevated subway pillar. It was still there well into the following morning. Five 9mm shell casings were also left at the scene as the killer walked away. Four minutes after that shooting, three cops in an unmarked car spotted a male on foot at Macon Street and Howard Avenue. This was five minutes from the crime scene. The person was walking type fast. Turns out, it's Boyce, a reputed member of the Young Stackers gang. At the time, Boyce had 12 prior arrests, six of them sealed, including a robbery arrest and a gun rap. A church pastor's grandson, Boyce also had four drug possession charges dating to 2015 and was busted on a DWI as well. As the uniformed cops exited their vehicle, Boyce turned as if to assume a shooting stance and immediately let off multiple shots at them. This next part of this cannot be show on video. Join the Patreon to see this. Link in description. Anyway, the cops returned fire, one of them letting off a dozen rounds and the other nine rounds. The officer who fired nine rounds was struck three times, once in the bulletproof vest, which stopped the round, as well as in the buttocks and right leg. During the exchange, Boyce would get shot in the buttocks and survived. Neighborhood residents were horrified by the sound of late-night gunshots and the morning details about what happened. Several parked cars nearby were riddled with bullets, including a silver SUV with a person inside who escaped injury. An eyewitness recalled cops slapping the handcuffs on boys as the wounded officer was lying face up on the street nearby. According to law enforcement, a 9mm weapon was used in the SUV shooting and Boyce allegedly fired a 9mm at police. Someone who knew boys challenged the characterization of boys as a gang member and suggested the label came from racial profiling. But this about wraps it up for this one. This was a quick Bushwick story. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.